I'm just building this whole thing up to be a more peaceful place for myself and others. Ah, uh, I had to downsize my clothes when I got small so they would fit me. And this is my cat love. How am I going to turn this whole property into a food forest? I wanted to expand my gardens and grow a lot of my own food. Hi, my name is Jen. Welcome to my tiny house. Let's take a tour. This is my kitchen. I wanted to put it with a kitchen on both sides so I would have plenty of room to cook. I needed a lot of counter space, but if I didn't need counter space, I added a drop-down counter that I can lower. I wanted the country-style sink instead of the stainless steel sink. I bought a two-burner electric stove that I could put on the counter. I could also put it away if I needed space. I vented it and put a hood on it. I bought a range oven instead of a microwave. I also bought a full-size refrigerator and definitely plenty of storage in the pantry. My cabinets open and close softly, so when you open and close them you won't hear any kind of loud noise or anything like that, it just closes softly. I personally used to be a hoarder, so I needed a lot of storage space. I also wanted closed storage instead of open shelf storage. So I wanted to make sure that I had tons of cabinets, tons of places, hidden places so that things weren't seen, out of sight and out of mind. And so I saved a lot of space in the kitchen for that reason. And this is my little dining room. It actually used to be a little living room, but when I added the living room I was able to turn it into a little dining room. And I picked out a table that folds into four and if all these chairs come out, I can enjoy a meal. Better than sitting on the sofa bed and using this fold-down counter as a table. This is my stack room. This is part of a three-phase project with my tiny house. The first phase was my business office. Since I have the mobile home, I moved my office out of here. Now I finally have one to live in my tiny house. And the third phase is actually for when I get older. I'm going to turn this living room into my bedroom. So I'm going to move all the stuff upstairs into this living room. Right now this is a couch and a futon comes out. Oh, I have a Mitsubishi mini split. It's not working currently so I replaced it with a window unit which is actually just as good. It supplies air and heat. So, I'll eventually fix the mini split. Ah, but until then this is amazing. I've been living tiny for about 6 years and my goal at the beginning was to live more affordably and with less stuff. Ah, I wanted to be outside more and that's when this all started. My house was built by incredible tiny homes, it was 58,300. And I've lived in several different places including a campground. Ah, it was legal there so I didn't have to get any kind of permit or registration. They allowed RVs but they also allowed tiny houses. And the last place I lived was a friend's house. They had a house there so they were allowed to have tiny houses parked there for the time being. And when I was at that place I decided to look for my land. Oh. And that's when I found some land in Tennessee, bought it, and have been here for two and a half years. This is my bathroom. I decided on a regular stand-up shower. Yeah, I don't take baths. So I just wanted something that was easy and compact. I also like the fact that this is tile-free. I didn't like cleaning apartment tiles so I went with smooth walls so it would be easier to clean. I used to have a compost toilet when I first got the tiny house. I had it for about 5 years but then I changed it to a regular flush toilet. This is my storage stairwell because I needed more storage. 
I added storage on all of these stairwells. Most of them open up. I have pantry and a place for a litter box for my cats with ventilation. There's a little computer fan that ventilates dust and odors. It also has a little swing door that they can come and go through. So I opted for poles on the wall instead of handrails. Oh, I wanted to keep this whole space open and will eventually add a rustic railing to make it look like the rest of the house. And this is my bedroom. I designed it as a 10 by 8 foot bedroom. I also opted for the ceilings where I can sit up on the bed instead of the frame in ascension. This bed used to be on the floor but people told me you might want to raise it off the floor. So I bought a platform underneath. It now has storage under the bed. I have two egress windows right here in case someone needs to escape. In case of emergency an NERI also have an emergency ladder underneath that is 13 feet tall which is the size of the tiny house where I could escape out the window in case something happens. I put an oversized dresser in here so I could fit most of my clothes in but there is plenty of room to store them. I had to downsize my clothes when I got small, so that it would fit me right. And this is my cat love. Since I have four cats, I needed a space for them to live and sleep, eh? And I put litter boxes in here. They also use this walkway to get from my bedroom to their loft. I also added these windows, they're called hopper windows, and I put them in there for the cats so they fold down halfway and the cats can sit on top of them and look out the windows or look under them. One tip I would give for being small would be to plan and do a lot of research. The planning and research that I did was still not enough by the time I got here. There were things that I didn't take into consideration, but the fact that I took a whole year to plan my trip was very beneficial and helpful. Because then I knew what I was going into. I knew some of the problems I was going to have to overcome because I had done my research on what to do about it. This is outside storage. I have my water heater here. I had a system that collected rainwater, but I don't have that anymore and I turned it into storage. And this is outside storage. This is the storage room that is located inside the house. If we open this up it goes all the way through. And it was made for tents, tables, and long tools. So, just like the tools that I use in gardening, I needed a space that was just long enough. So, I designed it on the outside of the house so I could have access to more storage of course. And this is my chicken coop. I have 21 chickens. This lane is outside of my workshop garage and when I first moved into this property I didn't have a chicken coop. So I decided to close this lane off as well so they have a space to live in. They also have their outdoor run and I also built them a sick run so they could raise the chicks in there so they could have space between the adult chickens before they were introduced to them as well as if one of them is sick you'll want to separate it from the others so it doesn't get the others sick. And I can't wait until they start laying because it's just that I give away fresh eggs from the farm to family and friends and I sell them to the city. So I started running low on eggs and I decided to get 9 more chicks and they're almost fully grown now so they're going to start laying soon. I'm so excited. This is my garden section. How am I going to turn this whole property into a food forest? I wanted to expand my gardens and grow a lot of my food. Ah, uh, I'm going to sell the food eventually. Ah. Uh, so I just wanted a big food source on my property, spend less and make some money off of it. I actually got some scrap wood from friends of mine. 
That's where I made some raised beds. The first year I was here I had gardens in OS and they didn't work out very well for me so I expanded this year and was able to do all that. And now I love gardens so much more, there's a lot more produce growing, it's a lot healthier and I'm excited to get all the produce coming out. I'm just building this whole thing up to be a more peaceful place for myself and others. It's going to be a food forest eventually. So everything I grow is going to be edible, medicinal or educational. So in the future when people come to visit here, there will be a lot of things to learn in owning the property and turning it into a community. I don't know how long it will take, but every year, every week, every month that I do things, I'm manifesting my community. M. And so far so much has been done in the two and a half years that I've been here and I can't wait to see it all come to fruition. Thank you so much for watching the tour of my tiny house. You can find me on all of my social media at the links in the description below.